Welcome back to another episode of Let's Have Breakfast. Today I have here with me Money Mo, my boyfriend, Mohammed, mm-hmm. um, Mr. Gopak. Many names for this lovely gentleman here. But I'm surprised you said Money Mo instead of Mo. Yeah. Mo Dollars. Okay. Sorry. Mo Dollars in the building. So thank you for joining me on an episode. You didn't have to walk very far. You just came straight into our straight into our dining room and we are here. But I especially this month, you know, we are talking all about love, heartbreak, all the things. And so I really wanted to bring him on, give the opportunity to talk a little bit about our love story, some of the some of the things that we have been through. But there's a lot of excitement happening. February is a great month. I am really excited to have you here today and just talk and chop it up and, and you know, bring this energy to Let's Have Breakfast. So I would love for you to tell Let's Have Breakfast fam a little bit more about yourself, who you are, how we met. Please give us the deets. Well, I guess my origins, I'm originally from Senegal, West Africa. Dad's Mauritanian, so that's Northern Africa right there on top of Senegal. My mom's in Senegal. He was a activist and stuff back there. Um, so ended up moving to the United States as refugees. Came here in, like, 2000. So I was a baby. I was the oldest out of, like, three or four now. But just going to school in Kansas City. Um, I have been to a lot of different schools. I probably went to, like, 11 different schools in just the inner city of Kansas City growing up and stuff like that. Um, been kicked out of school. I don't know. I I had a lot of experiences, but I love Kansas City for real. It just really shaped me and just, you know, helped me see the world in different ways. And then graduated, pretty good student and stuff, went to Wichita State, kicked it there my freshman year, really involved, having fun, doing all that stuff and everything like that. Things carried on. Um, sophomore year, college, that's when it was Jaden's first, uh, I guess, first year going there, so she was a freshman, I was a sophomore. And I guess she heard about your boy or something like that, because, look, she followed me on Instagram and everything like that, and I guess she was liking pictures, and I guess I ain't take no hints or anything like that, because back then I thought people were just liking pictures just to like pictures or whatever, so I was just like, all right, I'll like a couple back, but I was never there. I'm going to slide you Why, DM. ladies, ladies. Why on earth would you like a bunch of pictures if you don't want them to message you? Like, come on now. Come on now. You had to know. And two, I would like to add to that. Women like when, oh, this is feeling real podcasty. We sitting here and women like, ooh, okay. As a young lady myself, I prefer when Hints are dropped, but you still make the first move. Like, I didn't mind making the first move, but like I'm I'm throwing you hints that I'm I'm picking up what you putting down without me wanting to take the first step. Like, that's what I was trying to do. And yeah, you didn't you didn't catch the vibe, so no, I'm not really the king to mind games. Uh, I'm getting a lot of games, but the mind games is like one of those tough ones. You gotta be real clear. And real simple with me, or else I'm going to just think it's just, you know, you being friendly or you're doing all this and that. And then, I don't know, sometimes I don't like to overstep boundaries either because it's like, shit, if you're a cool person, I just want to keep you on some cool stuff. I don't want to throw that in the mix. But, yeah, I mean, you definitely, you know, slid in my DM talking about some, when is a, I forgot what group on campus it was. I think it was like oh, it was Women Phenomenal of Ex- Women. Phenomenal Women or something like Men that. Men of Excellence, Phenomenal Women. Yeah, just because I was involved and I guess I, I knew about stuff going on, so... Center that, had a little conversation, got the phone number, took the text. At first, whenever I was texting, she used to take forever to reply. And then that was uh that was one of my things. I'm like, I don't care who you are. If you ain't gonna if you act like you got something better to do, go ahead and do that. Like I'm a, um, I've been here, I'm cool. So that was just one of those things we had to kinda get through. But I mean we was just friends at that point for real, because at least in my head I wasn't trying to Yeah, he wasn't that. pressing the issue. Nope. No. No, no, no. We talked for three months, which is, I mean, like in the grand scheme of things, like things, that's not a super long time. But at the same time, like in college years, like things are moving so fast. It's like you see people get booed up, like all these things. And so I feel like there were always these kind of like, what are we like? Are we both interested? Because we never really had the conversation up front. It was just kind of like we will flirt with each other. 
we would hang out. Like, I would come over late at night. We wasn't doing none of that. We was watching SpongeBob. I would come over late at night. We really weren't, though. We really weren't. Like, it literally took... It literally took that entire time before we like even kissed or anything at all. So it was it was a very slow progression. Why? I I don't like rushing into nothing. So I'm like, look, if it's unclear, it's unclear. I'm gonna just keep it that way until it clears itself up for real, and then things will get going. But I think um, somebody sped it up. It was uh, my, uh my boy Martel. His uh my roommate. He was uh talking to this one girl. I ain't even gonna say her name or anything like that. <laughs> But I guess we, I forgot what night we was at. Oh, we was yeah. Here. We came back and we all walking down from the parking lot. And she come pull me over to the side and she drunk and stuff. So she loud as hell. And she like, when you going to ask Jaden to be your girlfriend? And Jaden right like probably five steps behind just, us. No, no, no. I was ahead of you. Yeah. Because I remember being like, ooh. And then she turned around. I'm looking at her. She look, I'm like, I ain't even thought this far or anything like that. So now I'm like, damn, now I got to ask this girl to be my girlfriend within like I'm like the you know the shot clock didn't start it or something because I'm like well shit I don't really got an excuse to she heard it already I don't really yes it did accelerate things but I feel like we were like we had a good thing leading up to that like it wasn't just out of nowhere and you just felt forced into yeah I guess she had to see some stuff to she was like well y'all gonna ask y'all look like y'all already doing the do we did it, yeah we, had, we... <laughs> Do, when doing I say the, doing the do, y'all uh, <laughs> just together. Okay. So that's my old vernacular, I guess. So. All right. We got together, how we met. Um, we've been together now for six years, and that's a really long time. Like, went through all four years of college being in this relationship. You went through, I guess, four years of college also being in this relationship. Uh, <laughs> There's nothing wrong with going to school for five years. Your program took five years. years. It's, it happens it happens to us. I'm just saying I graduated in four years. Yeah, so like we've I've experienced my first apartment with this man. Like we have gone through a lot of firsts and a lot of different experiences. So that's kinda why we operate as best friends, as partners at this point. Last year last year was rough and I feel like twenty twenty four has a lot of different energy. Like it feels different to me. I don't know about you, but for me, 2024 feels like fresh. It feels like a new chapter. It feels like a lot of the things that happened, like just like post grad, because I th I think that's something that no one really necessarily prepared me for. Like, no one really prepares you for life after school, after you graduate college. And I feel like, especially those of you that are college sweethearts, like there's some examples out in the wild. Like I know in school, I used to listen to Kadeen and Deval Ellis a lot. They met each other in college. They talk about their relationship openly. They talk about things that I think at that point when I was like 18 or 19, I really couldn't grasp to the full extent. Like I feel like now that my frontal cortex is developing, I'm like, oh, Okay, I could understand why you why you gonna fight about the laundry, and I like I get it. It makes a lot more sense because like back then it's like we don't live together, we see each other in passing between classes. Like every time we spend together, really genuinely is quality time, and it's not like we're both in the same place. Mm -hmm. And so some of that friction that we had straight out of college, like it just was unexpected, and I think it threw us both for a loop, and we didn't necessarily know how to react to it but now that we're in our mid-20s like I think things are a lot smoother and they flow a lot easier than they used to it was like a greatest strength as a couple and I think one of our strengths in college was probably you know we was both busy as hell and was able to just to uh, deal with that maneuver and stuff like that and didn't really let it uh really interfere and stuff but I guess it was just more opportunities for us to um stay distracted or like you know you have stuff something to do so whenever you are together um you make more time out of that and stuff but uh now it's like yeah if you're busy you got to really you know keep someone up to date and stuff in college i could just be busy and you just like well he busy and stuff i'll see him when i see him and everything but mm -hmm. now it's like you don't just get to be busy for a couple of days and doing whatever and stuff like that because we're live together so i could or you know doing whatever i want and stuff because <laughs> Well, maybe because we got a dog. That'd be the really but the now main it's, thing. Now but now it's also like, now it's also like, what's for dinner? Like, yeah. we're busy. We're busy. There's no groceries. What's for dinner? Like, it's like having to figure out those small things that 
you didn't even really realize are like part of your regular routine, but it's like you're figuring, not only are you figuring out your life post-grad as an adult, like figuring out navigating that stuff, but you're also navigating how to now communicate with your person. Like, yeah, what is for dinner? Like, how are we, who's taking the dog out? Who's doing all of these things that have to get done? Like, and there is a balance because like, at least in this relationship, we don't necessarily do gender roles. Like, I feel like there's some things that we're like, <laughs> first of all, you're about to get canceled. <laughs> Go flood his DMs. I need, I need my own beehive like fan following. And I need y'all to go flood his comments with some pancakes. As long as y'all follow. Check out the link in the box. He's not being serious. Please don't please don't let your takeaway be that this man hates me. Cause I know all the think pieces on TikTok, on Twitter, on whatever, they about to come for him. And I I want y'all to know he's kidding. We don't do gender roles. There are some things that we're a little bit more traditional about. Like I do try to make an effort when it comes to like household, like things and like when it comes to kind of more the manly um car and and so there are gender roles cool. but not not necessarily it's like people don't want gender roles but there's always gonna be gender roles it don't matter like i mean it's a harsh reality to kind of say you can try to diminish it as much as you can but in reality if it's a situation where it's like i'm a girl so i can't or won't do this you're a man, so you probably should handle the situation. So it's like we can't just eliminate, say, any time in any relationship, there ain't no gender roles. Cause but that's not what I girl. said. Like, what I was saying. I'm just getting to let people know, though. Like, it's not going to ever just be like, no, nah, it's going to be some things like, yeah, your girl will probably be the better person to handle that. And yeah. your man will probably be the better person to handle that and stuff because that's just something that's more suitable for him. But it don't just take away where it's like. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing, girlies. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Sometimes your man is saying the same thing as you, but he just explains it differently. So there's going to be a disconnect in communication. And that's one of the biggest issues that we be having for real. Like we, we just, at least, at least to me, we just said essentially the same thing. Just in, in different ways. That's what I was getting at. Like, like that I really mean, I would understand it that way. I like to explain with it something that I'm like, but I can. I but, wouldn't. But, I wouldn't draw what I heard. What I just said from what I heard from you. That's so what I mean. So like, but that is what I was trying to say. That that's what I was saying was mm -hmm. because you never let me fucking spit it out. That's what happened. I kept trying to say. Yeah, see how she talked to me. I kept <laughs> when, the, trying when the cameras off. I kept, I kept trying, trying to say uh -huh. that yeah, not always, always because, because I was, I was trying, trying to get to the, the point, point that, that yeah, yeah I, I traditionally, traditionally do housework and and, and, and like try and get that stuff done, but. If, if you, you need, need to, to, you step, step in, in and, and do it. it. That's, That's what I was trying to I get at. I understand that, too. <laughs> Whose show is it? It's Mrs. Breakfast Show. Thank you. It's Mrs. Mrs. Breakfast, Breakfast Show. show. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So, yeah, I mean, life takes over, and your partner is just, like, one of those people you have to keep in the loop about everything. Like, you, there's just kind of no small detail. No detail is too small when it comes to... Like keeping people in the loop. It'd be that detail. You forget that. Draw up a conversation later. And you're like, you don't really think or care too much about it. But I guess you never. No, know it how is much like like you'll be like, oh, I'm I'm running out. What are you running out to do? Like I'd be wanting to know more things. So yeah, I mean it is it is small details. I feel like our connection is clear even just through this interview where like. We're able to play around with each other. We're, we're able to be serious at times. We are able to laugh with each other, even when we disagree, which has not always been the case. But I, I think that's a sign of growth. So with all that being said, what is something that you've learned about yourself through this relationship? I guess, you know, you can never really see yourself in your full entirety, um, you know, without having like a perspective from someone else and everything like that. So some things that you may do, you may not notice something other people will do that they don't notice. You can easily see and stuff like that. But sometimes it just takes a, a conversation or just some type of reflection and stuff. So I realized um, in my relationship, you know, one of the things I can work on is just my communication styles and, and methods and delivery just because uh, 
I guess, like, in school or just growing up and stuff, I've been a leader in a lot of situations. So, like, uh, I guess in the past, just growing up, in many situations, I've been, like, the leader of the group or somebody like, always got to take charge. He's the leader of the group. And, like, mainly my... <laughs> Yeah, leader of the group, mainly, you know, when it comes to just dealing with men, boys, whatever, and stuff like that. So um, how I talk to them, I can always be straightforward and, like, you know, have a loving delivery where it's like I'm trying to get a message out at the end and stuff like that, but really be, you know, stern in what I'm saying where it's like I'm not leaving too much room for you to kind of misinterpret it. And sometimes it can just sound not even harsh or anything like that, but it's like, damn, like, where it's like you don't probably feel like you can, you got nothing else to say back and stuff because I didn't you know, said what I needed to say, and just, you know, I want to kind of leave it at that, um, so just finding different ways to communicate, um, listen, um, when it comes to, like, you know, giving people time to talk, because I do love talking a lot, so, and I don't mind when people interrupt me to talk, because I'm the type to, I go back and forth with you, but other people don't like when you interrupt them while they talking, <laughs> and stuff like that, because it messes up their brain, they process, and uh, kind of frustrates them and different things like that so like yeah that's one thing I learned you know I don't the way I communicate and what makes me upset may, may not make other people upset and vice versa so when people are talking and they kind of challenge what I'm saying and everything I never feel like it's disrespect it's just like all right now it's my turn to just go go ahead and say what I need to say and we can lead this conversation no matter how much we disagree with like all right that's cool so you think that way I think this way but in a relationship a lot of times you can't just be like that's cool you think that way I think this way because then it's just going so, finding some type of way to get your message across without, you know, because half the time it's not what you say, it's how you say it, as they say and stuff like that. I feel that. like so it's can, not even half the time. It's it's well, more than half the time. You can be 100% right. And then it's like, you said something that, it was just like, hmm, I didn't like the way you said that. And it just <laughs> take away everything. So, that was, that was one thing I feel yeah. like I learned. And I feel like you've grown a lot through that, too, like... I see it. I see you like noticing things. And I feel like I feel the same because I think one of the ways I've grown in this relationship is like he said, sometimes it's the way you say it. No, most times it's the way you say it, not necessarily what you say. And I, I'm just a spicy Leo girl, like spicy Leo only child type girl. So sometimes it sounds like I have an attitude or I'm I'm yapping I'm yammering I'm coming back at you hot and spicy and it's like I don't even really mean it that way I don't even realize I'm saying something in a certain tone or whatever and then uh, some sometimes previously I would double down on it because it's like I don't have an attitude but it doesn't really matter if I have an attitude or not it's the way you're being perceived like maybe I don't have an attitude maybe I really didn't mean to come hot and heavy but that's exactly how it sounds and that's how it's received and like that's something I have to note and understand and kind of work on because it's the nature of the beast and I feel like that's something I've also improved on this year too like even now I'll say things and I realize like right after I said it I'm like oh I didn't I didn't mean it like that don't <laughs> I didn't mean it like that before yeah, this I've been better at that. yeah before this starts like a a little tiff because like that is something we've gone back and forth about because it one one person or another got an attitude and one person or another has has a type of feeling about it so just in general I feel like we've grown communication wise a lot we talked about growth we talked about all that stuff but um I guess like when it comes to habits what kind of habits have you seen yourself developing before in our relationship and like in college that you've either like kept or like or what new habits have you developed after um that you feel like you don't do anymore mm. if that, that question, question makes sense. it kind of didn't but i know what you were trying to say so let me answer accordingly mm -hmm. i think one habit that i strayed away from that i would like to really bring back is i'm such a words of affirmation type of person and i used to write and you, like you, no, let me not get, let me not get into that. Let my answer be my answer. I used to write a lot of cards. Like I used to write you cards that had shit on both sides of the page, had Amazing. stuff, had stuff on the back. I got him one of those like three foot cards. At one point I wrote entirely in the thing. I just like very much, that was something that I really like showed my affection 
within and that's something that I would like to continue doing and I feel like what I, it's hard once you move in with someone it's like I see you every day like you should know how much I love you like we I see you every day you should know how much I love you like we talk every day I I mm-hmm. give you a kiss like we hug like I said I love you yesterday. <laughs> so it's like you get in these habits that you aren't really showing true affection for your partner in ways that you used to so that's something that i would definitely like to get back to especially after valentine's day show my sweetie some love and i too used to have this journal that i started at literally maybe before we started officially dating or maybe the day we started dating Damn, got that effect on i <laughs> books. okay I started a journal that I had always told myself I would give to him on our wedding night. And I am not great at, I'm not great at journaling period. Like I get in habits and I will update it regularly. And then out of nowhere, I just stop. And then I don't do it for months or years, but I really want to get back in the habit of entering even the small things. Cause I used to talk about, we just went on a date. He, this is the first time he told me he loved me whatever, whatever. And it's still something I intend to give you. But I also, I'm not, I don't like surprises. If I have something exciting, I want to share it right away. And that's what happened. I showed, I was like, do you want to read something? I was like, do you want to read something? And I just, I just let him read pages. He hasn't read everything because I, I update it still. Like I tried to get a little better. I tried to get a little better about it this summer, but yeah. So those are habits I wish I was still doing. Um, I think the first part of that question, though, was what are habits that you have right now? I would say one of the habits I have is just making sure that as soon as I get home from work, I set my stuff down and then I say hi to you. We have like carpet in this apartment, so I, I don't really like walking in with my shoes on. So I need to like do the whole process of setting my stuff down before I come in, but she can come in full handed every day. Yeah, with I both do. hands, purse, jacket, coat, whatever, mm-hmm. keys, lunch, lunch bag. bag, lunch bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a dog it. jumping on it. Uh huh. It's a little overwhelming, but I still make a point to then find wherever he's at. He's usually in the office, and I go say hi. We talk about our day. Um, I'd like for us to get better about like eating dinner together too. We will eat dinner together. We just going to do it with the TV on. I would rather not do that. So that's me. What about you? I feel like I used to splurge on food a lot. She wanted it. I was like, go ahead and get it, girl. Huh? You treat it like it was a damn black card or something. Yeah, we're boycotting right now, so I'm not going to say their name, but that certain coffee company that we did have on campus, <laughs> like every day, he was like, you want something? Oh, my God. I remember Do I, I had something. something. Yeah. I had like $1,000 on Grubhub <gasps> just to use Yes, because just of COVID. Just, just to use for food. food. When I tell you, you spent... <laughs> we, Damn near it was 50 50 as far as like the food because I'm like, if she but wanted something, she could just get something. Let's be fair, we shared the food, it wasn't just hey, here's the food. You, we, sh- we, sh- we ordered the food together. Mm-hmm. And also, want to add too, that was during COVID, and like COVID was kind of interesting for you specifically because everyone had to kind of clear campus, but you were still there. I was kicking it, I was by myself. I'm like, look, y'all can leave, I ain't need. <laughs> I didn't yeah. need all y'all niggas on campus anyway. I'm like, not really had too many people bothering me. I mean, it was different at, at you know, at different times and stuff like that. That could have probably just been at the beginning of the year and stuff. But, you know, throughout the summer and everything else, that's when things, you know, progress. I guess, like, as far as, like, the change and stuff, it's not really just like, oh, I used to just feed you, feed you or something like that. It's, like, more of, like, you know, giving without, uh, you know, saving as much or thinking about, like, later or something. So it'd just be like, shit, we got some. Let's run it up. Let's you know let's spend it you know stuff like that so now um can't really have that same mentality and stuff because you never know what life really throw at you and stuff so you gotta you know just be ready for whatever shit anything you need a new car all right go ahead and pay that you need some tags all right well you got to make sure you know anything that happened you know you got to just make sure you try to be accounted for so not only did we grow together through college but Muhammad also is a business owner and he's been a business owner for this will be the fourth year you've been working on it for a little longer than that but this will be going into the fourth year of officially being licensed and doing all the things so 
talk a little bit about what your business is. And then also I want you to talk about how you feel like it's impacted your relationship and like what other entrepreneurs that are in relationships or seeking out relationships can take away from you. Uh, when I started my business, you know, this was probably like the end of 2020 or something. And this is just really just concept, you know, getting prototypes and things like that done. But I noticed there was a need on the market because everybody was smoking weed, especially in shit, we was in school in Kansas and it's really illegal out there. So you get caught with it, you know, you're doing some time. So everybody was always, you know, in traffic, moving around, being safe and stuff. You know, you need to pull up and smoke. But nobody uh, or nothing on the market allowed you to just, you know, move easy with your weed, you know, roll it up at the same time because all these stash boxes were just big, clunky, obvious looking things and stuff. Nothing that was fashionable and everything. So, you know, I did my search and I went on every smoke shop I could think of in the Midwest and around the uh, United States and stuff. You know, I did my searching online and everything, decided to come up with a product. So I'd be in my engineering building just, you know, uh, putting things together, seeing what things I can uh uh, stitched together i went to walmart and bought cases and stuff but essentially i created a smell proof case um that allows you to roll up your weed it got a built-in tray uh, magnetic lid and a bunch of different accessories all in the hard shell case and a bunch of different colors makes it easy to wear it make it discreet and it comes with a lock as well um if you need to lock it up so i just made something that was convenient uh convenient and um, easy to use for everybody no matter if you're a beginner to smoking or an old head or an old head or somebody that's just been smoking you know, their whole life or whatever like that, um, no matter where you are, too, especially somebody that wants to travel a lot, somebody that likes traveling. I want to be able to smoke wherever I go and stuff like that. So that was just the kind of idea. Uh, when it comes to starting your business, you know, really think about where you're going to get the funds from and everything. One thing I wish I would have done a little bit better is realizing how to ask for money or fundraising and things like that. But it's just like at that point, I had that mindset. Where it's like, nah, this is me. I'm going to do it all on my own. I'm going to figure it out, especially being in my kind of business. It was hard, too, like. I could have probably had an easier route going with the, you know, banks and, you know, just a regular system where you can just go to a bank, you know, create your business, do all these different things and stuff. But my business was uh, considered like a high risk or I was selling prohibited, prohibited items um, online, according to some like uh, uh, payment processors and stuff. So it made it really hard to uh, do things. I had bank accounts closed and all this stuff. And I wasn't selling weed at all. I was just selling an accessory related to it. So that was a, a challenge I had to figure out and stuff but learning to be patient um learning to understand you know how to pivot and learn um different things about whatever industry you in and a big thing is to find some mentors of people that's already doing it um that you can see and that's you know that can prove that they're doing it and really take advice and learn from what they've learned from because i'll just set you apart or at least you ain't got to you know make those same mistakes so or mistakes so, you know, just taking that advice as far as in a relationship. Uh, I don't know. Anything you can do to help out your partner when it comes to business will be a benefit. Um, times might be tight sometimes when it comes to money. If they're an entrepreneur that has to put in a lot of their own personal, you know, money and stuff. So when I graduated, I got my job. Like, I took the trip to Senegal, West Africa. We just moved in our apartment in May. I was gone for like a month or something, a couple of weeks, and then... We did it in June. In June? We moved in June. And then came back, and then I started, I didn't start working until July, and I've already like started my, I mean, until August, and then started my business too, so, you know, every, this is my first paycheck, every single thing has really kind of gone towards that, really, because I didn't really have too much to pull from working uh, on campus and just being so involved in college and stuff. That's so real. And on the other side of that, being a content creator, like he has the experience and knows what it takes. He knows what it takes to run a business. He knows what it takes to run a business, though, seriously. So he is very understanding when he's like watching me stay up late, editing videos, watching me really prioritize being on my phone versus like being able to be in the present moment, even though like that's a habit I'm trying to get better at because I would like to not always constantly be thinking about work. I think working as a content creator is challenging because it feels like everything is content. Everything needs recorded. Something always needs edited. Something always needs posted. Like there's always something happening. And because it's such a fast paced industry, it's like you have to just push things out. If there's a trend, you have to push things out. I think he's been very understanding and 
is my assistant sometimes. He's helpful when I'm like, I need to go shoot for this campaign. Come with me. And we got, we even got to go watch the Chiefs preseason. We got to watch the Chiefs. So, yeah, I think there's give and take careers in general. Like there's give and take. Um, some people are really dedicated to their careers. Like we're different because our careers are really prioritizing our our business ventures and hopefully one day we can come back and be like yeah you knew us when but right now we're still in building stages the foundation and you know just being each other's sounding boards is really important and being able to check each other when it comes to working too much having a stupid idea um maybe doing things that aren't necessarily aligned with our priorities like really being able to have candid conversations and accept that understand that Mm -hmm. as As we wrap wrap up this episode episode of let's Let's have breakfast Breakfast, this is very very special valentine's day edition of let's have breakfast i have just one more question for you where do you see your relationship in the next five years successful no that answer absolutely is not gonna fly Um, i feel like in five years our relationship should be thriving I'm 25 right now, so I mean, I'll be pushing that, that 3 0 or something. And you ain't going to be too far. You're going to hey be a year now, off. Yeah. Hey, now. Yeah. Pushing 30. Um, hopefully, I guess, maybe by that time or around that time, maybe kids in the picture or something like that. Hold on. Hold on. we doing kids before marriage. Can I, Can I finish? finish? Uh, okay, okay, finish okay, the thing okay, okay, or that's anything what I like that. <laughs> of course, marry, have family. Um, or starting to have a family or whatever. Um, both doing good as far as whatever career path, entrepreneurial ventures um, that we decide to do. Um, living in a place that we both can enjoy. Um, probably somewhere I got good weather. Um, and still having the means to, you know, travel and live wherever we really want and stuff. Um, being able to communicate really well and effectively when it comes to things happening in life, um, you know, being able to enjoy each other's time and company and still having fun and finding fun, joking around um, and laughing at, you know, things that life has to offer. That's uh, that's what I feel. That was perfect. I have no notes. That's how I feel as well. So you don't even have to ask. My light is saying lights out. So I'm assuming she she knew what time it was. Thank you for coming on this episode of Let's Have Breakfast. Mm -hmm. I love you. Happy Valentine's Day. I love you too. Happy Valentine's Day.